let's take a look at number 12, which looks intimidating because it's got a lot of words in it. But ultimately, before I even read any of the question, I can see that I was given a formula here. And it's it's got an exponent in it. And when I say exponent, I can see this t is up in the exponent. So just keep in mind that it's an it's got an exponential component to it. And ultimately, I have five variables in here. And I don't know what they mean yet, but I can see there's this one with PV. There's capital R, little r, n. And as we talked about before, there's t. So before reading any of this, I can see I have five variables in this equation. So typically what happens in problems like this, and I'll read through it in a moment, I'll read all of this, is that you'll be given values for four of the variables, and you'll be asked to solve for the fifth variable. And the flip of this, or not flip, but you could you could use this with any set of numbers. And so what I mean by that was if you were given four variables, uh, or if your equation had four variables, then you would be given three and asked to solve for the fourth, right? So it's it's always, you, you've got one more variable than numbers you are given, and you're asked to solve for that missing variable. And I'm going to go through and figure out what does PV stand for, capital R, little r, little n, and T. And, and then I just have to see which of those four they gave me and which one they're asking me to find. So let me change pen colors one more time. So for example, and I don't know, because again, I haven't read through this problem yet. Maybe they gave me N, little r, capital R, and T, and maybe I need to solve for PV. That could be one option, or, or some version of that, right? They gave me four, I'm gonna solve for the fifth. So let's go get the context for this. I'm gonna erase my notes here, all right? And then let's see what we're dealing with. So it says the present value formula is used when the amount, and here's one of my variables, PV dollars, is borrowed and then repaid through a series of equal payments at equal time intervals, and the compounding period of the interest is equal to the time interval for the payments. The first payment is made after a time equal to the compounding period. So that is a lot of phrasing. And typically what we're talking about here is, is this could be a credit card or a loan formula. Right, and a credit card is a version of a, a version of a loan. So what this is saying is you you borrowed some money, right? However much, let's say this was a credit card, you owe X dollars or PV dollars on that credit card. You're making the same payment each month. So maybe you're putting on it 50 bucks a month, right? You've got an interest rate. There's a number of times in a year that you're getting interest compounded. And typically in most credit cards and loan situations, it's 12, it's usually monthly. And then this is gonna be the number of payments you need to make, right? So how many, and since we're going in, probably in months, I, again, I need to read through this to make sure, it'll tell you how many months it's gonna take to pay this off. All right, so that's the setup. Let's go find out what our official, um, what our, what our um, variables stand for. So I know one is PV for present value. I've got R here as your regular payment. Oh, and actually, let me put here that PV, I'm gonna highlight, it's the present value, right? I've got little r, I've got that that's the interest rate, it typically is, right? I've got little n, it's the number of times interest is paid per year, all right? And typically, like I said, it's very common for n to be 12. And then T is gonna be the number of payments, all right? And since we're talking about monthly payments or more, most likely monthly payments, it'll tell me how many months I'm going to be paying this, this credit card or this loan off. All right, so let's see if we can figure out where these, these numbers go and then plug them into this formula. All right, so I've got a balance on a credit card of 274.51. So that is my present value. All right, the credit card charges 20% annually. That is a terrible interest rate, by the way. If you have a credit card that's at 20%, see if you can get a lower one. And here's the key phrase, right? Compounded monthly. So once I see monthly, then I know N is gonna be 12. So just keeping track, at this point, we know this is 274.51, right? We know R is gonna be 20%. We gotta write it as a decimal. We know N is 12. All right, so I, I have three of my variables figured out. And then the next piece of information says the minimum payment is $10, oops, let me get my highlighter, is $10 per month. All right, if the person does not make any more purchases using the card and pays only the minimum payment each month, so I'm gonna pay only 10 bucks, that's what my capital R value is now, all right? 
it says how long, right? So what's that time value? How long will it take before the balance is paid off to the nearest month? So when they're saying how long, I'm going to be solving for t. And you can see I was given four of my variables. I'm going to be asked to solve for the fifth one. It is up in the exponent, which means I have an exponential equation, and I'm ultimately going to use a logarithm to solve for this. But let's start to set this up. So I've got 274, 51. That's going to be equal to this giant fraction. I have my capital R value of 10. I've got 1 minus, and then in parentheses, 1 plus 20% over 12. And then we're going to go to the negative t, and we're going to close that bracket. And then my denominator is going to be 0 0.20 over 1, 2. All right, so here we go. My, my whole goal is to get t solved for, right? And it is up in an exponent, like I said. So let's isolate the exponential term. And when I say the exponential term, I'm talking about this expression. That's the expression where I have a base and I have an exponent. So the first thing I'm going to do, I want to get rid of that fraction. I'm going to multiply both sides by 0 0.20 over 12. All right, and let's see what we get. I, I did crunch this ahead of time. When you multiply these two numbers together on the left, you're going to get $4, well, not $4, excuse me, 4.575. All right, and then over here, oh gosh, let me stop scrolling. We're going to have 10, and then we're going to have this 1 minus, and I'll crunch this number in a moment, 0 0.2, 1 plus 0 0.20 over 12 to the negative t. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to divide by 10 on both sides because, again, I want to get that exponential term by itself. So let me divide both sides by 10. All right, this is going to cancel out. So now, I personally, when I'm solving for a variable, I like to have it written on the left side of the equation. So let me color code this. I'm actually going to write this term over here and this term over here just because that's how I like to see them. So I'm going to have 1 minus, and we'll have 1 plus 0 0.20 over 12 to the negative t, and that's going to equal 0 0.4575. All right, so I'm getting there. The next thing I need to do is subtract both sides, or subtract 1 from both sides. All right, so I'm going to have now negative 1 plus 0 0.20 over 12 to the negative t, and that's going to be equal to negative 0 0.5425. All right, and then ultimately I can I can cancel out those negatives on each side, right? So I have 1 plus 0 0.20 over 12 to the negative t, and this would be 0 0.5425. And you might be saying, well, why aren't you calculating this base? You absolutely can. The only reason I like to wait a little while until I calculate those numbers is because the sooner I start rounding off my decimals, the less precise my answer will be. So I try and keep everything in its original form until I'm ready to make that ultimate calculation. All right, so now that I've got my variable in, uh, or my exponential term isolated, I'm going to go ahead and log both sides, right? And that's going to allow me, and let me get my pen going, to take this negative t as an exponent and bring it down in front of that logarithmic expression as multiplication. All right, so let me move this over here. So now I'm looking at negative t times the natural log of 1 plus 0 0.20 over 12, and that would equal the natural log of 0.5425. All right, and then what I want to do to isolate t, I know these look funky, but this is just a number, and I'm about to go calculate that on my calculator, right? This is also a number, and negative 1 out here also a number, so I'm going to divide both sides by the negative natural log of 1 plus 20 over, oops, you know what, I got to make sure that that fraction, let me do this, is just under the 20. You know what, let me rewrite it just so it's a little bit better. I don't want to be confusing. It's already confusing enough. So we'll have 1 plus 0 0.20 over 12. This is going to, oops, and then I'm going to divide this side by the negative natural logarithm of 1 plus 20 over 12. And then I'm ultimately going to figure out what this number is. And I, I want to pause here for just a moment. If you didn't want to use the natural log, you don't have to. You could have used the common log, L-O-G. I just tend to like natural log. It's just how when I was going through math, they really stressed that. Um, so I'm just more used to using the natural log. But either logarithm, either common log or natural log is fine because we have calculator buttons for both of those. So I've got the natural log of 0 0.54. 
0.25 over then the natural log of 1 plus 0 0.20 over 12. All right, so let me head over to my calculator and let's go try and take a look at this. So, oops, let me get out of this. All right, that must have been a past problem. So I need to do negative and we need to do the natural log of 0.5425 and I wanna divide that by the natural log. I would have one plus 0 0.20 divided by 12 and I would close that parentheses and I'm looking at about 36.999. So let me head back over here. This would be 36.999 and it's really pretty close to 37 and the units on this would be months. And there is my answer. All right, so taking a look back, and I'll pinch this in just so we can see all of it. It's a pretty long problem. Yes, this formula is ugly, but ultimately it was a case of they gave us, and let me change colors again. They gave us four of the variables. They gave us PV, they gave us R, they, or capital R, they gave us little r, but they did not give us T, and they asked us to solve for it, and it was an exponential equation. So I isolated the exponential term, did a logarithm and crunched that number on my calculator. And that's how you solve those types of problems. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.